we're back and i have spent i don't know what would you say about 20 maybe 30 minutes just posing some stuff around yeah we were also just kind of BSing yeah too, kind so. of chatting and having a good yeah. time so here's what our character looks like now so some little things i'll point out first um the feet are a little bit bigger at least the you know the toes are a bit more spaced out so he gets a little more grounded they're not quite so dainty uh we spread out these little dual uh, bones on the legs and the arms. Uh, we kind of adjusted the hands a little bit, so we have kind of a back and front of the hand. Now, if you want to see the two side by side, because I did make two separate saves, and, and because they are both loaded in as Z tools. I've got uh, Key Lineman uh, 3, and then I've got the reposed version as well. So I can bring uh, the other one in as a subtool. So if we go down to subtools, and I can say insert and here's the one that I already have. And let's see, Key Lineman 4. I guess that's the original one. So we'll go ahead and just grab that. And if we want to reposition it, we have to get a little bit clever. First off, we have to make sure that the new one, the sub tool, is actually what's selected so that we can edit that. We need to go over to the Move tool. Let me bring my draw size down to naught. And we need to find that root sphere, which looks like it's right about here. Now check this out. If I try to move the root sphere itself, of course we can move it, but we can't move it off the center line because we have uh, symmetry going on. Now to make that motion, I just want to point out, I'm holding down Alt and I'm clicking on the connector spheres that connect to the root. If you try to move the root itself, you're just- Repositioning. Yeah, you're just moving the root and that doesn't help you at all. So what we gotta do is hit X and that will turn off that symmetry, at least temporarily. And then we can slide this guy off to the side and then we can look at these two right next to each other. Now, I don't really expect this in terms of a training video to be of significant help to you, but you can see how we have much smaller feet here mm -hmm. and how they've been spread out there. Some little changes to the hands uh, here and there. You can see how all of these little dual bone systems have been spread out in the new version. Uh, the positioning of the legs has been updated, but that's nowhere near as big of a change as these areas here. Right. Um, in terms of the legs and their posing and positioning, if you don't like what you've got or if the spine is too contracted or anything like that, that's all stuff that we can adjust later on as we're adding on our Z sketch. We can actually go into bind mode and make adjustments and everything we sketch onto the skeleton will just come along for the ride, which is pretty cool. Now, that done, let's go back. Actually, we'll go back to our Z tool. The big thing to point out is no... No spheres were no added. Spheres were added. <laughs> no spheres were added in or the removed. creation. So I'm going to go ahead and click delete and click OK, and we'll get rid of that odd little uh, Z tool there, our sub tool. And now we are ready to begin the Z sketching process. Very easy to start this process. Just simply go down to Z sketch and click edit sketch, and you're done. Now I already have a stroke in here from when I was playing around just before the show started, so I'm just going to alt drag over that and remove it. That thing looked hideous. It did, but it does show how... I'm going to have nightmares, thanks. So. Yeah, very, very good. So uh, we have Z sketch active, and really the only thing we, we have going on here is we just click and drag, and we are adding on detail. Cool. It's very straightforward. Now, we're going to go pretty slowly through this process and build up our detail kind of a stroke at a time. This is not the kind of thing you want to rush. Uh, it's also not the kind of thing you want to get really carried away on. Um, ZBrush remains very stable. However, at some point, if you have a whole bunch of strokes and you go to optimize this and turn it into a skin, uh, it can take longer and longer. So I highly recommend that you take a moment and kind of think about how you want each of these strokes to be. What I'm going to do is start off just by adding some detail to the head area. Mm -hmm. And you'll see me do this a lot. In fact, let me undo a couple of times. I'll just do this again. You'll see me add a stroke and then immediately smooth that stroke. Uh, if you lose track and stop doing that, for instance, if I just start adding stroke after stroke after stroke, uh, when you try to smooth, you're only smoothing one stroke at a time. And so that can get a little bit problematic. And I'm going to march through my undos. So let's just kind of walk our way down the spine. If you have symmetry on, which I do, by the way, uh, anytime you paint down the center of the character, you will get, it's just kind of like one big brush stroke as opposed to two. So we'll use this as a way to create just sort of a basic bit of, of mass for the body. And I'll do this. Kind of want to do the same thing for the arms, and then I kind of don't. I'd like to build these up kind of in a, a more muscle structure-ish sort of manner, uh, but it seems like a little bit more mass uh, will be prudent there. I also want to point this out. If you're totally new to working with ZBrush, you'll love this or you'll hate this. The size of your brush 
is technically remaining constant, you got to remember that you're not zooming into and out of your, uh, a scene. You're actually scaling your model up and down. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Because when you quote unquote, I've used finger quotes, when you zoom in, which you're not really zooming in, your brush is relatively smaller now. So you see the size of the, the stroke that I made there. If I undo that and I zoom out again with finger quotes and I try that same stroke again. Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, the distance that or the size, the scale of your Z tool to be precise about it is going to affect your brush stroke. So just be aware of that. It's not a problem, but it is something to kind of get used to. Also, it's a good idea from time to time to tap the A key and kind of see where you are. Do not stress yourself about how ugly this topology looks at this point. We're going to be fixing that a little bit later on down the road. Now, I like kind of creating a basic form of topology. Ooh, check out what just happened here. I guess I should point that out. I don't mean to change topics no. too much. But if you're painting and your mouse jumps over to somebody in the background, you will you might notice some odd behavior. So you notice the leg kind of crosses over us, right? Watch this. If my mouse goes over there and comes back, we get some spheres back there in the distance. Now, that may not seem like a big deal, but watch as I try to smooth these. <laughs> They just kind of go nuts, and that's because they're trying to stretch out to that position. Dude, that guy's awesome. Now, here's an interesting thing. You can undo that, and you can hold down Alt and erase those spheres out there in the distance, and then when you smooth, they'll, they'll start to follow a little more where they were supposed to. But generally, when I see that, I consider that a good indication to try a different camera angle and just go at it again. Now, what I'm doing, at least for starters, is just putting down kind of a, an initial amount of mass there are a couple of different schools of thought in this regard and neither one of them is necessarily wrong i'm not trying to say that you should model this way that way or any other way but um you could easily argue that you should just do this at the z sphere level you, you can just go ahead and size up your z spheres and then build up from there but um huh, i'm not so <laughs> i have no other way to put that let me actually make this brush stroke a little bit smaller and we'll run down the forearm. The cool thing about Z-Sketch is you see where these two strokes kind of uh, interpenetrate into one another. We get this. Now, this, is, this will startle you at first. You'll be like, wait a minute, I wanted a hole there. Why don't I have a hole? Why do I have the flipper now? Yeah, it does make it a little bit difficult to make hands, too. But before you get a little bit scared about that, uh, what you got going on is an, uh, a unified skin. And its resolution of 128 is just a little bit too low to create those separations. So pull this up. You don't necessarily have to work in uh, nice, clean increments, but I like to. So I'll go from 128 to 256 and then just kill the preview and start it back up. And here's what you get. It is kind of a, uh, a trade-off. You will need to find the resolution that works best for what you're trying to accomplish without it getting too dense. At the same time, it doesn't matter too much. We're going to be retopologizing it all anyway. So, you know. Anyway, so let's turn this off. I'm going to... You know what? I'm actually going to nuke that. <laughs> I just don't like it. And carefully erase that. Sometimes it erases too far. That's okay. And a little bit smaller. You will probably find yourself at odds with your brush, brush size more than once while you do this. Also, if you hit A and you're like, oh, that doesn't have the shape I wanted at all, don't fret yet. <laughs> it's way too early to, to freak out about that kind of thing. As I mentioned earlier, we're just kind of putting down an initial coat of mass. And we're going to have a lot of adding and moving and shaping of these uh, sketch spheres before the day's out. Also, I like to try to keep my strokes down, a number of strokes. You don't necessarily have to work this way, by the way. I mean, you can be like, if you want to do a finger, you could go uh, so here and then make another stroke here and then make another stroke here and then kind of smooth them all together. But when I'm doing the first few, like the underlying surface, I do kind of like to have just one great big stroke. So we'll go ahead and just kind of work from there. Actually, I, th I think you once said this looks like balloon animals. It does. And it kind of <laughs> does look like balloon animals. Man, I'd so love to beat a clown that would make me a balloon animal that looked like that. Did you say beat a clown? No, what is going through your head? That's, uh, that's what I heard. It's like, oh, I'd love meat, to beat a meat. clown. And I was like, wow, that's like the coolest thing anybody said all day. <laughs> well, I'd love to beat a clown. Yeah, I'm bored. <laughs> that poor clown. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're just here to make people laugh, dude. 
That's my Facebook quote for the day. I'd love to beat a clown. <laughs> Sounds like something off Fight Club. Who would you fight? Bozo the Clown. I gotta watch that movie again. It's been... It's been a day or so, hasn't it? It's been a while. Yeah. All right. So you saw me kind of go back and forth with finding just the right size that made me happy there. Mm -hmm. And that'll end up being two strokes. Watch me care. Yeah, it'll be fine. Now, also, just as kind of a, a heads up, I'm not necessarily planning on keeping all of these strokes. What this allows me to do is as I toggle back and forth between my preview, I can see if there's any spots of the body that I've overlooked. When I go to focus in on a specific area, I may, I may very well find myself removing out some of these spheres and adding in new ones in their place. This is just kind of a ritual on my end to give me a place to start from. Sure. Um, so that I can look at our unified skin and say, all right, this is doing what I wanted to do in terms of what's been handled and what hasn't. Now, I'm not going to get into any kind of detail at all, so I'm trying to slap my own hand every time I want to add detail, which is all the time, by the way. So bring this out, smooth that in. Let's run up the leg. See how ugly that guy That wasn't too bad. Down through there. And these do get kind of fun. Smooth that out, smooth that out. And down the toe. Smooth, smooth. And you can already see we're taking a little bit of extra time with those Z-spheres is already giving just a hint of a shape there that we can work with. And since we're just, we're going to be handling a lot of sculpting here, the neat thing is that as we get deeper into the uh, Z sketching process, we can use all of our tools. We don't just have to sketch these in. You can grab and you can move these spheres as well. And then you can smooth out the result from there. So uh, if I increase my draw size and my focal shift, that actually becomes a little easier to see what I just did. So you've got a lot of reshaping power that you can play with. Just be aware here. You, know, you see what I just did there? Yeah. <laughs> so back over to drawing. And it doesn't quite connect, but I'm not going to stress that. Again, these are all, I consider these all tentative spheres. Woof. Hang on, let me try that again. <laughs> that was just horrible. Much better. It's just, as you rotate around, you're kind of seeing this at different you know, sizes and scales because like now I'm reaching even further away, so now I have to adjust that size again. Right. You just have to kind of watch out for that. And there you go. Thank you. I had to redo. If, you, if you're trying to, like, what did he just do? Um, I apparently undid a layer of smoothing that I didn't mean to. And I'm not doing it right now, and I could be, quite possibly should be, but I do want to mention that Z-Sketching is a heck of a lot of fun with a digital tablet. Well, it seems like it would be much easier. It's much more intuitive. This. For yeah. this part of the process, because again, I'm not worried about detail right now. I'm just getting some initial mass in place. Uh, watch out for this sort of a warning. Um, it's not a crash. Uh, we There's a pretty good chance that we'll be just fine. Uh, so anyway, let's, I'm going to go ahead and click cancel, cancel, and we've got this back, but now is a really good time to do a quick emergency save as, and we'll call this Z sketch underscore one, and I'm going to put an underscore mem message next to it. So if something weird happens to that file, I'll at least know that while I was working on it, 
mm-hmm. I did get a little memory window that popped up, but generally this should be just fine. I'll be perfectly honest. I haven't looked up exactly what the nature of that error is. I'm just saying I've seen it before and it didn't cause me to um, lose either my lunch or my work. <laughs> Unlike some spectacular crashes and programs which, such as which, Mac. Yeah, Maya, which caused me to Unity, lose both. Unreal. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Memories uh, from all of those, eh? No, oh, man. <laughs> no. You will learn saving habits eventually, won't you? Well, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Especially if you're a student of mine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Oh, uh, that's okay, Zach. At least you now save religiously. Yeah. Hey, come on. It was fun being evil, and it was really fun watching well, you, you know, hey, beg and plead. Hey, you know, because when all was said and done, I did end up getting a job there at the center. And you don't, did? Don't think I didn't do that to people. <laughs> It wasn't like, well, I know how much it sucks, so I'm not going to do it. I was like, oh, heck, yeah, I'm going to do it. I didn't it. know you did that to people. That's good. I'm proud of you. You never knew that? No. Oh, come on. No, because once I got you that job up there, I ended up just working from home all the time. That's on 3D true. Buzz. That's true. I had a company to build. Yeah. Okay. So we've got our really basic got balloon, balloon, key. balloon key down. Nice. And the the great thing about starting off like this is that we've already got a basis that we can test in terms of, you know, tapping A to see what our skin's going to look like. Uh, we've got a little bit of mass we can work with straight out of the gate. Of course, there's a whole lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. There's a whole lot of, uh, of Z sketch spheres we're going to be adding. We'll probably end up deleting some of these as we go. This is a... It's kind of a personal preference thing. Now, if you're the kind of person who's like, well, I just want to go one area at a time and just sculpt that to profession and uh, profession to perfection and move on, then by all means do that. That's just sure. not exactly how I work. Sure. Uh, because in a lot of cases, I will probably be using a lot of the sketches I've just laid down as an understructure, mm-hmm. and I can build off of that. Or if it's already too fat or if it needs to be reshaped and I don't like what I'm getting, then I can nuke it and, and go from there. But I've got that decision to make. Exactly. So I think we're at a good spot now to go ahead and call this video. Yeah. And And I I think when we start back, that's when we'll get into the interesting stuff. If you feel like it, of course, feel free to continue from here. If you're just if you're following along and you want to push things. Also, don't be afraid to tap a and then come into here and, you know, just play with sculpting. Don't be surprised if you get some funny results every now and then because the topology is really weird. Um, before we really get into hardcore sculpting, we will have to retopologize this character uh, to help the flow. And if you take a look, like you can see why. Mm-hmm. I mean, look here with like, what are these polygons even doing? And if you're a, if you're a Z brush aficionado, you might be thinking, well, that shouldn't matter too much. We can just you know, divide over and over and over again until those polygons are so small that it doesn't matter. It matters. Um, it, it'll definitely matter. So we will end up doing an intelligent retopologization of the whole thing, which the cool thing about doing that is um, once that's done, if we want, we can use that mesh or maybe one divided stage up from that mesh as a basis for something we send over into another application. Mm-hmm. Uh, even, and this is, this is way out there, outlandish thinking, you know, uh, if we could take that retopologized model or again, one stage of, of division up higher, depending on its face count, it could be something that gets rigged up and animated. Uh, take the final result from ZBrush and turn it into like a normal map or, or some sort of surface map to, that sends our detail back over. If the original retopologization is low enough, it could even pave the way for a game model. Mm-hmm. It's entirely possible. So uh, what I'm going to do is tap A to get out of the mesh mode. And basically this says, hey, you were doing some sculpting. Are you sure you want to go back to what you were doing? And we're going to say, no, discard the changes. And then that'll take us back to our Z spheres. Uh, just at this point, make sure you do another save as. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that name that I stuck on there a second ago because that's just as good a name as anything else. <laughs> but that will wrap this video up. I wanted to thank all of our viewers and, of course, all of our member sponsors for being generally awesome and keeping us going. And uh, if you're not awesome like a member sponsor, you should consider becoming awesome like a member sponsor. And we will see you guys all in the next video. Sounds great.